586 glazes. I mean, four. The month is April. Four, three, 2019, scene one, take one. <laughs> Hello, friends. I'm getting my clapper up to date. Here we go. Second, but third project today. Third project of the day. And, and, uh, I'm gonna just drop my chalk. And, and second broadcast of the day. I spent most of the day reworking my wedding portraits. That's another story. All right, here we go. Daily Art Engine number 586. <laughs> Still dropping my chalk. All right, enough of that. Enough of that nonsense. So I am, I've got a big, big task on my hands here. Um... I possibly can't imagine trying to do this And if you do it vigorously enough, for long enough, it turns into a thing of mobile work on <laughs> That's usually a joke, but on a being this size, it's probably difficult to Take more than 20 minutes. All right, at the moment, I'm using completely transparent blades. And uh, let me turn you for a minute and show you what I'm doing here. I've got a butcher tray. And I'm mixing liquid, which of course is a fast dry medium, with Neil McGill, which is a slow dry medium. I want to make sure I have enough Neil McGill. That's quite a lot. About 50 50. Wow. That's a pile of stuff. So this is fairly slow dry. It's not as slow dry as pure Neil McGilp. Uh, Neil McGilp applied very thinly would be dry, I think, according to my experience, in about uh, three days, maybe four. It's applied very thinly, much more than that. And then. I'm going to dip both my brushes in hands all. So it's quite a sloppy mess. I've got a lot of canvas to cover. So I'm thinking that um, half liquid and half Neil McGill will give me about a two or three day drying time, which should be plenty, plenty slow enough so as not to be in trouble with any things like anything underneath. And I'm painting, I'm glazing right now, as you can see, with just pure, pure medium, no color in it at all. I, I thinking about it for a couple of days, just this is the first time, I think I, perhaps, that I've done a final glaze on a pink canvas quite, quite this large. And I decided it would be, um, I'd get more control if I cover the entire painting with a transparent glaze. And then, come back and begin to uh, drop tints, tints of color into the wet gray stuff. So 
pretty. <laughs> Just that right there makes the painting prettier. It has the effect, same effect with a, a good coat of um, varnish has on it, the gloss varnish has on the painting. All right, now I'm going to, bear with me for a minute here. I'm going to, oops. First of all, I have to lock the easel in the low position so that when I lift up, right? So when I lift up the painting, if the thing doesn't go, the easel doesn't go my way on me. thing weighs 50 pounds, maybe more. All right, but I didn't want to, um, you know, use a step stool. So I'm looking mostly at the glare, the reflection in the light behind me. Behind, whoop, sorry. I left you guys, sorry about that. My favorite trick, leave you pointed at the wrong thing. Doing what you see me doing here. <laughs> you didn't miss anything. <laughs> Sorry about that. And then I took my painting off the easel. Oh, here, let's go get my monitor going here. There you go. Alright, I just about got enough soup here to finish the painting. Almost. Almost. Please, I was a little worried about how many gallons, <laughs> so to speak. Hang on, folks. Sorry. Change, change monitors. The batteries in these little here monitors don't last very long. So I, I have four of them. I'll try to keep them charged up one time. There we go. All right. We talking? Test, test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Sorry, still not working. Hang on. There we go. All right. So I need to mix up just a little bit more of that soup. And I, uh, <laughs> yes, it's quite, quite smelly in here. I have the garage door completely open behind me and uh, and also the the people door not the door to the house <laughs> the end. The end. Okay, so what colors, what colors am I going to do? Okay, let me get, let's make sure our terminology is straight. Um, I call this one glaze, many colors. So don't be confused, just because I'm using the singular, a big glaze, doesn't mean it's all one color, okay? You could, you could say, well, I, I would call that mini glaze. Okay, you can do that. 
but I'm deciding to say, say since it's all applied at the same time, it's all transparent, I'm calling it one glaze, many colors. And any colors I want. And since still looking at the reflection of the light now, I'll make sure that the entire canvas has some of this slimy, <laughs> slick, shiny soup on it. Questionable whether I even want to try to clean these cheap brushes. I'll put them in different order. Let me sit here. All right. Well, that was a mistake. I'm going to use them again. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not, especially since I did that. Um, I'm using slightly smaller brushes. And by the way, these chip brushes are actually fantastic for doing large glazes. Because if you used a high quality brush, you know, a four inch wide brush, it would be virtually impossible to clean. These cheap brushes are, you know, sparse, are, they're coarse fibers, coarse bristles, so they are cleanable. Um, I, I've... While I am thinking, I'm going to get some of my oil sticks and get the dry outer shell broken off them. I'm just using a, an old file from my workbench. Because this would be a good opportunity to do some more um, abstract stuff, non-realistic non stuff. likely that if I if I do make a mark like that and I'm, I have discovered that if you didn't take a finger or a brush and rub over it it turns quickly from a scratchy crayon looking mark to a, a paint a painted looking mark except that it's very linear, so it still looks like a, a drawn mark. these marks that I'm making now with these with a paint stick pretty much means I'm going to require um, some some opaque painting on top of on top of this but not very much I, I want to keep it keep it to a minimum that is to keep the painting um, Why am 
I doing this, you ask? That's my hands today. New levels of magic. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. There's a very fine line um, between enough chaos and, and too much chaos. And right at the moment, of course, as you can see, I am adding chaos to the painting. Not that, that was, that was, that was pretty representational. But most of my marks here Now, let me repeat, if I'm, I, I'm adding lines, chaos lines, uh, non-representational lines. Now there's, well, most of them are dark, although they, they won't all be dark. I have here a yellow, a yellow, yellow ochre, white, and orange. I can also do those, in fact, orange. It'll still be darker than the blue, but orange certainly strikes me. Okay, so there are a couple principles that I'm kicking into here. One is huge. Lights first, darks last. Or, if you do the opposite. Boy, that, rewind that. <laughs> darks first, lights last. Okay, are, are, are you not confused? The second way I said it is true. Darks first, lights last. Or, anytime you put dark on the canvas, that means you must come back and do light on the canvas. Every rule can be broken, blah, 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 blah. If you don't know the rule, you're probably just screwing up. The rule is darks first, like last. So right now, I've just added several bits of dark. There, there, there. Um, there. Two, two nice blue streaks right here that I like quite a bit. And I like, I like this blue mark quite a bit, too. Okay, so just given, just given that principle alone dictates that the painting's not done because I've just put darkness on the canvas. The rule is, and this is one time the rule is not gonna be broken. The rule is I come back and do light. Now, I, I hope I get to broadcast. Light what? What am I gonna do light? Well, the, the, the main answer is I'm gonna do this color, sky blue, whatever it is, probably up next to, abutting. This is one of the things I'll do is this color abutting this pale pink line. I don't know if you can even see it. Let me let me zoom in and see if you can even see. Whoa, I'm sorry, my microphone's not plugged in. Hang on, sorry about that. I know you can hear me, but this... All right, can you hear me now? I know you can, but now my monitor's not working. Hang on just a second. I need to restart my monitor so that I hear what's going on. Sorry about that. I was in a hurry to see. All right, are we there? There, sorry about that. All right, so I've, I've zoomed in and I'm hoping that you can see this. I just made this pink line right here. Not this one, this one was there from the other day. Can you see that? I mean, it's right there. Okay, so I, I'm going to mix up this color and probably paint up to this so not only am I not going to now I can obliterate any part of that line that I so choose but it's more likely that I in fact won't obliterate it I'll actually accentuate it slightly by painting up to it now, and that's a Dan Nelsonism that's just weird uh, it's hard to explain why does that look cool I'm not really sure but I know that it looks cool all right now more to more to the task at hand. Do I want to do some color in this sky? I'm going to start uh, with with the easy easy solution, which is um, vignetting this corner a little bit. Again, I'm making a. I'm making a verb out of a noun. A vignette is a darkened corner. It's 
So the act of making it darker, I'm calling it vignetting. I'm not even sure that's a word. But around here it is. So that's, that's purple, violet. So I just darkened that corner a little bit. And in the act of doing that, I lost some of that, those blue lines that I put in there a minute ago. No big loss. If I so choose, I can, I can take a, a paint stick and do it again, which is, which is what I'm going to do. Hey, a little bit of brown right here, not a bad idea. Because now, those, whoop, boy, that intensified when I brushed it in it. That's all right. Because now it's a little bit, okay, are those supposed to be branches? Good question. And yes, I like people to be mildly uh, confused, you know? Is that, is that a branch or no? Is it just an abstract mark? It's fine with me for them to think that. Now I'm going to do the next easy thing, which is uh, go from violet on my brushes to ultramarine. And just give the sky up here a little hint of glaze. Just darkening it just a little bit. Okay, now here's one of the universal principles, if you will, that I'm operating on right now. Which is, and I always say it this way, ain't a color made that don't look better with something else on top of it. That's just a fancy way of saying, or a very stupid way of saying, very unfancy way of saying it. Transparent colors are more interesting than opaque colors. Okay, so I just put a transparent blue on top of this guy, which just makes it glow a little more. Now, I've explained many times in the past why um, transparent colors are more interesting um, than opaque. And I've said many times, and I'm not, I, it's not a matter of opinion, it's a matter of physics. Opaque color is a one bounce color. I, let me see if I can remember this. Transparent color is bounce, traverse, um, radiate, bounce, traverse, radiate, exit color. That's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven processes, processes are taking place with every transparent color where opaque color is a one process color, one bounce. Okay, so it's, now should we, therefore, should we do our paintings 100% in, in, in transparent colors? The answer is no, because the principle of variety uh, overrules the, the benefit, advantage, beauty of the complex, um, the complexity of transparency. Okay, so a painting that has both transparent and um, and opaque paintings, uh, colors in it will be more interesting than a painting that only has transparent, even though, in fact, yes, transparent colors are more rich, is the, really the best word, more interesting than And now I'm doing sort of surgical, <laughs> if you will, for in, in the realm of, in the world of glazes, which is not usually given to detail. What I'm doing right now is, is pretty surgical, if you will, pretty, pretty detailed. 
All right, and it's time to get my canvas back up on the easel. So bear with me again for a minute. Here we go. There. Definitely 60 pounds. <laughs> I mean that in my old age, I'm getting weak. <laughs> we already know that's happening. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> okay, more ultraviolet blue. I'm looking for areas of the painting that look like they'd look good with blue on them. <laughs> and some, like I'm doing right here, is just a little bit representational. Dark green, so trying to give this mass of foliage, which I take to be several trees, it's not one tree, but give it a little bit more of a rounded shape by doing shade, shade on this side. Already did this building a little bit. Oh, I know, this building right here. So this is part of the reason I like doing this. On my small paintings for the last 15 years, I've done this final glaze, hmm, maybe about 35, 30, 40 percent of the time. Um, but in this new world that I'm operating in, I expect to do it 100 percent of the time. Okay, this building right here ended up getting a little bit too much energy. A little bit too much, it's drawing too much attention. So simply by doing that, I've dulled it down, pushed it back. So. That's a nice, nice trick, if you will. And similarly, now I think most of this painting, by the way, I'm going to be doing warm glaze on. So I'm sort of getting the, the cool stuff, the dark stuff out of the way first. Likewise, this face of this building right here, I feel like would be better. And this up here, if it were same thing here, this building can be pushed back. And you regulars know that the, the, typically after I do glazes, the next thing I do is pick up a rag and lift out, erase some of the, the glazes. Wherever I want brighter, bright spots, I will All of a sudden we're getting bad noise. Let me see if this helps. There we go. That's why I wear a monitor, folks. Aren't you glad? In fact, I'm gonna pick up a rag and do this building already. I don't want this much darkness right up here. There we go. But I very much like the effect on this face. This right here, that helped that push that building, get a little bit more uh, contrast between, same thing here, a little more contrast between sun and shadow. Yeah, I'm having fun. I don't know, I like the, this blue, it's sweet. S 
so I'm quite happy with the, the technique of doing a, a glaze over the entire canvas, transparent, clear glaze, no color, and then coming back and adding the color little by little. That's a trick I'm going to use again, especially on a painting this size. Just gives me a little bit more control. And yes, I'm a control freak, just like you. <laughs> I just figured out ways to exercise control without looking like I'm a control freak. <laughs> The last several minutes, I've just been using pure ultramarine blue. That will change here shortly. First one, I'll go ahead. So I'm, anything that I want slightly darker. It's so fun. I can just, I'm just, it's like Photoshop with, I'm just able to dial up a little in, intensity, a little contrast so easily. And that's really fun. I'm going to do some on these buildings up here, but I don't think I want, I don't think I want to do them in blue. I wonder if I can persuade this painting to move a little bit to the, nope, I can't, Never mind. it's not worth it. And I think this whole area can be slightly darker. I had really hoped to have this painting done by tomorrow, but I now see that is, unless I get up at six o'clock in the morning, which is not my normal mode of operation. <laughs> but for art, would I do it for art? Come on, come on. What a man, what a man. <laughs> I don't know, I'll have to think about it. Tomorrow's a big day. Um, I am, all my paintings are out of all galleries. I'm in no galleries, except I do have a whole bunch of paintings at a big jewelry store here in Raleigh. Been there for a couple years. Has not been a good business endeavor, be that as it may. I have a whole bunch of paintings, most of them abstract, most of them very nice, if I say so myself. Very nice abstracts. Uh, but tomorrow, I'm renting a U-Haul and picking them all up. We work, work this all out. And at the end of tomorrow, I will have no paintings, so to speak, anywhere in the world for sale. <laughs> and you're wondering why I'm happy about that. I am indeed. I'm quite happy about that because I'm excited about shifting, shifting directions in my career. I've been in galleries for 15 years. Now, after tomorrow, I'm going back into one gallery. Um, only one for, for the moment. It remains to be seen. I don't know if I'm going to try to get into a uh, you know, uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, or Bangor, Maine, <laughs> Washington, D.C. I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to name some art places. Not doing a very good job. Washington, D.C., New York. Anyway, New York. Maybe, not holding my breath. Um, it's possible. Anyway, I'm going to try to sell paintings on my own with the exception of one gallery, which that one is Bev's Fine Arts here in Raleigh. Bev has retired, but her daughter, Wendy, has taken over the operation. I like Wendy a lot. And she, she agreed, she didn't bat an eye when I described to her this, my new, my new uh, strategy of selling big paintings. She said, sure. 
so we'll see. So she and I are gonna see what happens. Um, now I can, I can, turns out I can darken this corner quite a bit. So I'm using, um, am I on the camera? Yeah, barely. I'm using um, oxide red and dioxazine violet. corner of the painting really doesn't need to have any information hardly in it even though it is quite interesting but it's all very subtle it's just the way I want it so um, no galleries and I'm going to try selling big paintings for bigger prices. So this painting right here is right at $12,000. Sure, if you want, I'll make two of them for you. <laughs> if that's a little beneath your budget. <laughs> Different marketing strategy, different target audience. We will see. But I gotta tell you, so far, this is my second painting, second large painting in this new season, and I am absolutely loving it. Artistically, I've never been haven't been this excited in years. All right, I'm gonna get two um, smaller brushes and pick up some oxide red. Get it a little bit dirty with some of this blue and come up here to these buildings. You see some of these like a little bit, a little bit flat. Not quite, not quite enough differentiation. Well, it's too much differentiation for me. <laughs> not quite, not quite enough differentiation between the sunny side and the. There we go, and the shady side. This one here, especially. And this one. And this one. <laughs> All right. Now, and finally, this building right here, this big, brownish, tan, greenish building. It's a very interesting building. It's actually not green, but it, except for the top of it, but it looks and feels green because all the glass, all the windows are green. And uh, so in the skyline, it has a definite green cast to it.
and get all the terpenoid out of these brushes. Not sure that was worth the effort. I maybe should have just picked up two dry brushes. <laughs> Too late now. All right, now switching gears here, switching over to warm glazes, which will be oxide red, maybe a little Indian yellow, maybe orange. But before I do that, do I wanna do any more of this crazy, crazy shenanigans with, um, oil sticks. I feel like I do, especially down here. Can use some color. Looking for a rag. Now, it goes without saying, but I should say it that doing stuff like this, um, like that, that's a pretty strong mark right there, that, that assumes that I, I have the freedom to come back and do one more um, edit layer, which is correct. And in the edit process, I may cover some of that up. I, it's, I probably will. It's unlikely that I'll leave it completely uh, unmolested. <laughs> it will, I will. But on the other hand, I will probably do what I talked about in the sky. I'll paint up to it and actually accentuate it just a little bit. I feel like an orange line right there. It'd be kind of nice. Another one going that way. Why am I making all these marks? Partly because I know that I can. <laughs> I didn't used to know that, but now I do. I didn't used to know that you could add so much chaos to a painting. And in fact, in a sense, now this, I'm sure this is not an absolute. It breaks down at some point, but I'm not sure about that. <laughs> the more Pleasant. Now that that's the hard part. It has to be a pleasant mark. The more pleasant chaos you can insert. I almost want to use the word infer into the painting, and and still the the subject matter is easily read for what it is. Then the the. Seeing the subject matter becomes all the sweeter. Doing a lot of orange. How about some yellow? I don't know about that. Yellow is powerful stuff. <laughs> Okay, am I overdoing it? That's very possible. I almost overdid the uh, broken color stuff last night. It's one of the, I think it's one of those time will tell. <laughs> if I look back at this painting in years to come and go, ooh, I really overdid the broken color. Or will I look back on, I'm too close, I don't, <laughs> I'm too close to it literally, but I mean, too close time-wise. Whoops, 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 sorry again. Um, I'm too close to it time-wise to know whether I'll be love the broke X more than normal broken color or whether I won't love it. So, but I clearly have one more now. I clearly have one more final edit to go because um, 
I've just done a whole bunch of marks, random marks and dark marks. All right, let's get let's get to the the really the fun part here, which is um, putting out a little bit more Neil Neil McGilp, <laughs> most unfortunately named product. <laughs> Once again, they did not invite me to the committee meeting. And what do you say we call this stuff? Nail McGill. <laughs> he was drunk, evidently. Whoever, whoever came up with that name. <laughs> he was trying to order a drink. He'd had one too many. And he called it Neil McGill. And the other people thought he was, he was the boss, you see. <laughs> so <laughs> they thought he was making a name. They all rolled their eyes and said, well, he's the boss. So this happened in the 17th century. <laughs> Whoa, I've got some Indian yellow on my brushes. And if you know anything about Indian yellow, whew, it's powerful stuff. Now I put some other powerful stuff to counterbalance that. There we go. A distinct yellow orange tint. I need to stand back and look at that. See if I agree with that color choice. Yeah, I do. How about that? Surprising. Hi, Hello. Hey, do you need you me? Hey. Good. Oh, pretty good, but I don't think I'm gonna finish by tomorrow. I mean, by tonight. I could finish by tomorrow if I wasn't occupied. Yep. Um, not worry about this at all. Oh, you haven't changed that yet? No. I, could, I didn't have the number on me today. So I thought, well, I'll call them on me. Yeah, just keep it that. Then. What do you think? The question is, did I do too much weird color at the end yesterday? Weird color? Yeah, see all those, all the little oddball colors, pink, yellow, orange, green. I hope I didn't, <laughs> but I already did it. It is, it is more, it is more braver. All right, now everything I'm doing on this, on this road and this bridge right now is, is, all, is all going to be wiped off. I don't, I don't mean literally all, but it's going to be wiped off vigorously. Um, yes. You didn't know that? No, I just told someone they could reach you now. Oh, yeah, no, they can't reach me now. Yeah, Sorry. How much longer? Uh, another half hour, probably. 20 minutes, maybe. You can usually tell if I've got a thing in my ear and if I'm talking to myself. <laughs> All right. Again, I've, I've just warmed up everything quite a bit. And usually, usually warm is nice. 
it can be overdone. Don't, don't make that mistake. Um, but before I do anything else, I, I can't really see what's going on here unless I take a rag. I really like two rags, but I don't want to take time to cut that. So, all right. So let's let's watch the magic happen right here. And I'm going to zoom in. Hope that I remember to zoom out when I'm done. That's right. Let there be J Barber. Which J Barber is that? I don't know, honestly. So you get a really delightful and when there's any impasto, impasto the way there is right here the this the glaze then stays in the cracks right like unless i really get crazy on it um it stays and so and i'm not going to get crazy so it has sort of a, I, I think the best word is an antique -y look so it's just richer than it was it was some little bits of it like right here are just as bright as they were therefore before I put the glaze down but around it in this fascinating little dance of light So here I am. You see, pretty precise, right? I'm, I'm doing finger, one finger stuff. Now, the glaze that I put on that red, I'm leaving that. It just, it just made it just what I was talking about earlier, about a ink color made that don't, don't look better with something else on top of it. That's a classic example. It, it just pops glows, warm, magical. Oh, that's so nice. I'm happy. That makes me, makes me visually happy. <laughs> My eyes are doing flip-flops. I wish you could come to my garage and see this in person. It's so much better in person. But anyway, I won't complain. I'm glad you're joining me by the internet. as high as it can go because of the ceiling in the garage. <laughs> back for just a minute I want to see the effect of all that magnifique and the reds the little whoops it's a little red mark I made down here is still it's fainter because of course I just painted over it scrubbed over it and so on but you can still see it and it, I could leave it just the way it is or I could um, 
come back and accentuate it or paint around it a little bit. I'll probably do a little bit of the latter. This is so fun. Wish you were here. Having a great time. Wish you were here. Did you see that just come alive there? Just pop right before our very eyes. It's so fun to have this degree of control without the um, typical downsides of, of control. Does that make sense? just about finished with this operation. All right, I think I'm done with that. Yahoo, that was exciting. So that's the end of my glazing process. It's only 10.35 or so. Done with the paint sticks, I believe. I've done enough, done enough crazy craziness. I am the most anxious, if you will, about that this, the marks that I made in the sky. So I'm going to uh, work on that at least a little bit before I call it a day. Um, if you follow me often, you know. Yes? Well, I thought I was paged. I wasn't. All right, I'm going to take a little break because I need to go get a tube of I don't think I have, of titanium, regular titanium, not alkyd, right? Alkyd is fast dry titanium. This is not a time for fast dry. This is a time for slow dry. So I keep a few old tubes of titanium around for just this, for time just like this, because I don't want anything drying fast now. That would be big trouble. And uh, I don't have too much to do, just little tiny, tiny bits. Several places where I made those random marks up there, here, up here, down here in the road. Some of the marks that I made can stay just the way they are. Wow, that looks great. Here, I'm, I'm looking at one. Thank you, John Whitehead. Where's this mark? Yeah, can you, I don't know if you can see this or not. Um, this mark right here 
in particular. There's another one, but that follows the curvature of the road. It looks okay. This one is part of the original underpainting, way back somewhere in acrylics or oils, acrylics, I think. But I just made that a few minutes ago. Real hot little spike of, of red, but it's the same value. It's actually a broken color. And uh, that works real well. And then, anyway, I'm not, I'm not gonna point out to you all the places where that's happening. Some of these street lights. Wipe them. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's nice. Get them back to get them back to white. There we go. Are we back? All right. So I've, I've been painting without you for a little while here. I've done done with the sky. One of my nice red marks got almost completely lost. That's all right, but a couple other other couple others worked out quite nicely. And that's just fine. It's not the kind of thing you can force. Either it happens and it has a nice natural feel about it, or it doesn't. So I'm happy. I'm happy with the sky. I have been. The, the white accents on this building are spectacular, mostly palette knife or you know, large palette knife. Um, I've done some on this building. All of these, the, the sunny side of all these looks much better. And now finally I'm doing the sunny side of this tall building and don't want to do too much. It's a very busy building, and I don't want to get stuck trying to paint all the windows. That would be a disaster. <laughs> it took me a long time to, to get the right color mixed up, however. So now I've got a great big pile of whatever that is, tan paint <laughs> on, my, on my palette. I don't really want it. Um, I'm going to just scoop it all into, into one pile in case I can use it later on tonight or tomorrow. I don't know if I'll be doing any painting tomorrow since it's the big pick up and drop off paintings day. All right, <laughs> having done all that, now I think it's time to put my painting back up on the easel. Yeah. Whoa. Oh my goodness. The, the, the easel has come out of its track. Not a, not a happy, development with this boy This is a predicament. <laughs> All right, Whew. 
got it in. Phew. All right. <laughs> unexpected, uninspected fireworks there. So I want to just hit literally the highlights. I was a little bit worried that I got carried away with my broken color last night, especially the yellow. I'm excited about using that yellow straight out of the tube, lemon yellow, cad yellow light, whatever it is. But I'm afraid I used a little bit too much of it. The good news is with this one last final edit, and yes, by the way, what I'm doing right now should be the absolute last step in the painting process. Unless, of course, I change my mind. <laughs> but that's not likely. Not very, very much, very not, very much not likely. Um, anyway, so I'm, I'm glad for the opportunity to dial down that, that yellow just a little bit. So I'm feeling, feeling a little bit better about that. And I'm loving how the yellow is uh, peeking out around the, the strokes that I'm putting down now. But just not quite as dominant as it, as it was. Let's see. Here's a little bit right here, yellow right there. And I'm loving it as an under, under color coming through I don't like quite as much as I was. So that makes me happy. That's just my little concern there. And it has been alleviated. So that's good. Very little um, work needs to be done at this stage. The paint is all done. I'm just doing tiny bits. Whoops. Too much. Too much of a bad thing. <laughs> I'm gonna finish this tonight. I'm so close, I, I can't, I couldn't sleep. Anyway, if I went to bed, I'd be wanna, oh, wanna be out here painting, so. I guess I've got the most work I've got to do it will be down here now and not too much of it but that's that's where most of it needs to be done I think
Sweet. Yeah, this road right here needs, I'm not sure that I've got the right size brushes for this job. But I'll, since they're already dirty, I'll, I'll start and see. Um, nope, that's too, too light. Let's try this. There we go. That's the color I want. Remember that rule? Whenever you put down a color in the when you're painting in the opaque world, this does not apply to transparent. When you're doing the transparent, the, the opaque stuff, um, you put down a color. You come back usually right then while you're thinking about it, although that doesn't have to be right then. But anyway, you come back and put a color just slightly slightly lighter than that on top of what you just put down. Um, and I, I know you, you can't see very well, but I'm going to zoom in at the risk of forgetting. I need a production person here, don't I? Um, I, I talked a little while ago about, um, I'm going to follow up now with a slightly lighter color than what I just put out. I talked about, um, transparent colors are more interesting than opaque colors. So then I pose the obvious question, so should you do a painting entirely with transparent colors? And the answer is no, because the principle of variety trumps the superior interestingness. Variety trumps almost everything, by the way variety of color, variety of texture, variety of values, variety of everything. Um, when, anyway, so um, what I'm doing right now, the, 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 I'm painting with opaque colors right now. I, I hope that's obvious, right? Um, and I'm experiencing the very thing that I was talking about. That's too busy. Rats. Um, but the, the, um, the transparent stuff that I'm pulling down right now, on top of the I'm sorry, the opaque stuff I'm putting down right now, on top of the transparent that's underneath, is quite fetching. <laughs> Can I use that old-fashioned word? Again, so variety 
trumps almost everything, frankly. All right, now before I leave this area, I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, hit these tail lights one more time because they got glazes put on top of them and so they got darker. And uh, same thing with these headlights. Okay, you couldn't see those headlights. I guess you could. Okay, this is still just a little bit busy. I don't usually advocate painting with a finger. It's a little better. Usually the, the blend blending texture like that is not it's not the most pleasant texture. So it's not a good idea, but I think I can get away with it there. I just need Mix up some lighter stuff again. I don't think I like this mark right here. All right, I think that's all right. Let's move on now to some darker stuff and a little bit richer colors. Now I would like to match, I've got one of my random strokes right here. And I would love to match this color. That's not exact. No, I better get that a little closer. In fact, I'm gonna do something I rarely do. I'm actually gonna wipe that off. Okay, I'm trying to match this color very close. There we go. Because I want to make some visual sense of that, that stroke. And I don't mean um, realistic sense. I'm not gonna try to turn it into a, you know, a tire, a tire mark or something like that. No, no, no. I just mean, the question is, for, for the viewer, is that, was that mark put there on purpose or is that a mistake? And I want to make it a bit more obvious that it's on purpose. Then they, then they will relax. Then the viewer can relax. Say, oh, we put it there on purpose because he painted it up to, up to it. <laughs> 
then they'll, they'll receive the mark. And we won't worry about it. If they can tell that it was clearly done on purpose. It's one way to put it. Anyway, you follow me? Scumbling, blending in just a little bit. Again, you don't want to do too much of that because it's not a pleasant mark, generally. But if you can follow up with a, a, like that, a real painting mark, then it's okay. Here's another line that I want to, this is one that I put just a little while ago, a red uh, oil stick. It got faded out a little bit when I, with the glaze, but it's still visible. So now I've just accentuated it a little bit. And again, the purpose of that is not to try to tell the viewer that that's a, a thing. It's just a, a purely abstract mark. It has nothing to do with the reality of the picture. Now this little trick that I do of <laughs> painting up to the edges of things like this, I do, I do that quite a bit, enough that that's probably a, a Dan Nelson, to say it's a Dan Nelsonism. I've done that um, virtually from day one when I started painting more or less in this technique 15 years ago, almost 15 years ago. Same thing there, there's some pencil lines and I painted around them. And, and again, it's not supposed to look like it's a picture of anything. It's just pure abstract mark. It has to be a pleasant mark or it doesn't work. Same thing. Let me zoom in. I'm not zooming in much because I know half the time I forget. If you can see, there's a, there was a pencil line right there. And I just painted up both sides of that line. To, in fact, accent, I'm doing the same thing right here. There's now that right there. That could that looks like it could be a, you know, the stripe in the road, and that's okay. I don't mind if some of the marks look like they're representational. In fact, that's actually a a good thing that keeps keeps the viewers guessing. You may have heard me say before that a, a very high value of mine visually as an artist is that the viewer's mind is mildly confused as, as they look at the painting. Uh, and they, that actually creates a high zap of aesthetic joy juice gets released in their brain. when their brain is mildly, mind is mildly confused by a number of things. Uh, another way to put it, another, a very similar, saying this, almost the same thing, different words. Um, our minds really do get a kick out of subtlety. Um, our eyes are capable of perceiving degrees, uh, you know, variations in color, now, I, let me quickly add that it, not everybody's eyes see the way, for instance, mine does, or if you're an artist, the way, yours, the way your eyes see. It's, but we, we're not going to paint for the lowest denominator. We're going to paint for the highest. What people can't see won't bother them. They will not be aware of its absence. So we're painting for people with a higher, slightly higher degree of visual acuity then we don't want to aim for the, the low end of the spectrum because then you'll bore. This goes back to this principle I've talked about quite a bit. Um, you do not want everybody to understand. In here, I'm, again, I'm not talking about like contemporary art that is preachy and sermony and propagandish. And it's communication. I, I frankly, I loathe art that is given over to communication. 
And that's what most of the 20th century contemporary art is. It's, uh, it's designed to communicate. And it's real easy. I, I, I have this list called the Dirty Dozen. I, I don't want to go on this topic at great length, but um, I wrote the Dirty Dozen in my book that is I've work, been working on for years about modern art. I listed the Dirty Dozen several years ago, uh, four or five years ago. Uh, but in recent editions, I have discovered that the Dirty Dozen is uh, the topics that contemporary artists are on uh, 99% of their messages that they preach, so to speak, through their contemporary art. Um, I didn't realize it five years ago, but now I do. I've been educated that, in a word, they're um, cultural Marxism. So that those are the, the topics that 90-some percent of all MFA matriculants, they're preaching in their artwork. And what are they preaching? Marxism. Um, that sounds like an exaggeration. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just because uh, you don't know. <laughs> anyway. Oh no. Out of the out of the track again. There we go. Forgot to put my latch back in place. Alright. <laughs> Kinds of excitement here tonight. All right, I think I'm gonna hang up here and finish painting on my own. I don't want too much, it's almost getting too much energy down here. I should probably think about stopping. <laughs> <laughs> I like it though. It's been a good night's work. I'm I'm even happier with the painting now than I was just whatever hour, two hours ago. Yahoo! Thank you guys and gals for your company. I'll put it down so you can see it. I'll post a finished good photograph of this, which will be a challenge. I'll post it on my uh, YouTube channel. So if you go to my channel, Right, click on my the picture there by any of my videos. It takes you to my channel. Then there's home playlist, video, home video playlist, community. Click on community. That's where you see still images that I've posted. Usually, almost always, the, the finished paintings. But also I do things like outlines, teaching outlines, and things like that. Um, so keep that in mind. And thank you again for your company. Oh, wait. Let me look at your chats. Appreciate not too many of you, but a few. Thank you, Jay Barber. Thank you, John Whitehead. Jay Barber, are you one of my Jay Barbers? <laughs> There's four of those in my wife's family. Four? J, 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 J. Yeah, four of them. So I don't know if you're. <laughs> I see you tomorrow if you are. Or <laughs> Friday, I mean. <laughs> uh. Oh, Lori asked a good question. Do I have to worry about humidity or temperature? Yeah, I do. Um, not not right now because the weather is quite nice. I mean, it's chilly, but so that'll slow down the drying process a little bit. Uh, but in the summer, yeah, it would be quite prohibitive to paint out here. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you for watching. Like me. Subscribe to me. <laughs> chat with me. <laughs> if you don't like me, it's your tough luck. <laughs> Okay, thanks for watching.